Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Next Bite of Life. I am fanning myself because it's a scorcher today in Valencia, Spain. It's almost uh, 80 degrees, but the humidity makes it feel like it's so much more. This is a quick video. I'm just going to talk about things to consider when you're thinking about your expat life. In the last video, I had mentioned about why you want to be an expat and things you should think about and just the reasons why. So hopefully you've considered that and you're now ready to make a decision and you know that expat life is for you. Now some of the things to consider when you're thinking about leaving your loved ones and moving overseas is cost of living. That is probably the biggest thing and it's the most important thing that can either make it or break it for you. The cost of living differs so greatly, you know, wherever you go. If you go to Asia, for instance, the cost of living in Thailand may be a lot cheaper for you. Um, some people go to Europe and there are so many different countries. A lot of expats, as you, as you know, now go to Portugal and because of you know of course the cost of living is cheaper for them wherever they're coming to that was one of our considerations when we were leaving america we went to malta first because the cost of living was significantly lower than what we were spending in the u.s and spain is about the same at least for us is about the same as what we're spending in malta maybe just a little bit over that and then a future video I'll break down our cost of living and especially groceries which is a big thing so cost of living is probably the top the top reason and the top thing you want to consider because the last thing you want to do is end up broke wherever you are now the second thing also is the reception of the natives a lot of times you don't think about that and in America, it's so common for people to say things like, you know, the foreigners and the immigrants are taking our jobs and all this other good stuff that you've heard about a million times, so I won't bother going over that. But you have to think, when you go to a different country, you're now the guest. So you're the immigrant and you're the person. So you definitely want to think about the reception of the locals. Some of them may resent you and they, you know, a lot of places have, you know, economic difficulties. So they're also starting to resent people from other countries. So you just want to make sure that you have that in mind when you go or else you could be in for a really big shock. So I think it's definitely something you need to consider. Now, if you have a portable job where you're working online and you don't depend on the local economy, then of course you're golden, you know, you're fine because you're not really taking any resources from their um, from their government benefits or what have you. So having a portable job is definitely a way to go if you can manage it. Or having a uh, where you have a remote job where you're getting paid in American dollars. A lot of times, that money is now stronger when you exchange it for the local currency. So it goes a lot further. So that's also something you need to think about when you, when you move, is how the locals are going to receive you. Is it gonna be easy for you to make friends? Is it going to be easy for you to integrate into society? Now, some people move and they don't really want to do that. There are expat enclaves that you can be a part of and you know, you cannot, you can go a whole lifetime without speaking the language. That's fine for some people, but for people like me, I kind of want to know what people are talking about. And I kind, I, I want to watch everything on television in the local language. And, you know, I want to be able to be part of the culture. I think that enriches your experience. And that brings me to my um, next point apart from the local reception, is also um, the weather. The weather where you are. If it's cold all the time, you may not get to meet anybody 
because everybody's off, you know, in their own little spaces. If it's a warmer climate, everybody goes to the beach, you know, there are more chances of meeting people. So weather is a big part. And, you know, like, let's say you move to London where it's rainy and dreary a lot, a lot during the year. If you're someone who easily gets depressed, this may not be the best place for you. So you need to think about that before you make your move because it's like, it's part of your psyche. It's part of your, the, the whole package. If you're not happy with the weather, it starts to affect your thinking and it starts to make you depressed and that can lead to you not liking where you go to. So that's something to think about as well. I also think the size of the city that you're moving to is important. For a lot of people, it's not that, you know, it's not a big deal. But for me, and I think that's part of the reason why we, another reason why we're like Valencia over Barcelona or Madrid, which were the two places that we had thought about after um, we were leaving Malaga. We actually went to Barcelona for like three weeks to see if we would like it. And the center of time, first of all, it's very expensive there. So we didn't like it because of that. And we wanted to be in the center of town because you know, everything is happening there. We didn't feel like our first experience trying to integrate with society was gonna be like way far out. But it so happens that as far as like what we could really afford comfortably for our lifestyle, we had to really get out of the center and it kind of didn't make the experience. It didn't feel like the experience that I wanted. Now the same thing was Madrid, very expensive. We will both live in Madrid in a second. He didn't like Barcelona for reasons, different reasons. But Madrid, we both really, really liked and we would have loved to live there. But we kept finding, like looking for places, we kept having to go way far out of the center, out of the center, till we were so far out, you know, by the airport. It was just, you know, like for something that we could afford. So it didn't make for a good plan for us when we were thinking about going. So we kind of nixed that. So Valencia is the right size. It's not as big as either one of those places. You know, it feels like a big city, but yet we live in the city, but we're still, there's lots of green. And so you, you want to do your research about that before you actually make your move. The next thing to consider is the type of visas offered by wherever you're going to. A lot of places they have retirement visas like Panama, you know, or um, Belize, they have the retirement visas and you have to be like, I think Belize is like 45. And um, you know, so those things, if you're that age is fine. But if you're not that age, then you wanna make arrangements or figure out what kind of visas you qualify for. I mean, it would be nice if we could, if we could all just get up and move to wherever we want. But unfortunately, the world doesn't work that way. You have to figure out what kind of visa is offered by where you're going to. You may end up in some place like Thailand because you love it and the cost of living is low. But then if you have to do visa runs, it kind of ruins everything. Because, you know, for instance, this pandemic that happened, a lot of people that had left and now can't come back because they don't have legal papers or everything is shut off. So things that you need to think about that maybe even a few months ago, you didn't have to, but now the coronavirus has changed everything. So you know, things can change at the drop of a hat. So if you don't have your papers and you're thinking of making a visa run, what happens when you leave, you go up, now you're stuck there, they don't want you there, and talent won't let you back in. So basically you need to find a way to get back to your home country. And that's not always easy or cheap. And you know, a lot of the airlines are still shot. A lot of the air airports are still shot. So there are so many more nuances that you need to think about now that you didn't have to think about pre-corona. Now post-corona, it's a whole different lifestyle and a whole different life. So that you need to I guess the last point will be the social life where you're going to be. Um, 
to start with, I think it's probably a good idea to check like Facebook groups. So do your research and talk to people that are on the ground. See what they feel. See, see how they feel about living where they are. Is it easy to meet people? Is there more, you know, is there things going on? Is the food, you know, the food scene okay? The bar scene? I don't know what you're into, but you want to make sure that you're going to have a well-rounded life instead of just being stuck in your own little. And, you know, nowadays there are Facebook meetups and a whole bunch of apps for meeting people and getting together and doing things that, you know, that interests you, like, you know, my friends run a mahjong group and there is quilting and, you know, we, I have a foodies group where we just meet with other people who like to eat and we go out once a month. And so, you know, there are movie groups. So you want to make sure that that kind of um, atmosphere is what you want. If you're an introvert and you don't want to meet anybody, that's fine. But if you're extrovert, you probably need to make sure that you will be happy where you are. So hopefully this video gives you an idea of things to think about. And like I said, on the next ones, we'll segue into our cost of living here in Valencia and why we like it and why we chose it over Malta and uh, why we definitely, definitely are loving it. I'll also do a video on what our healthcare costs are and her house insurance and her home insurance and all that good stuff. So hopefully you'll stay with me and uh, watch those videos. Now, before I forget, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because um, I really need the subscribers. Thank you. See you on the next one. Bye.